Hello, today I would like to show you what's the difference between a MPPT solar charge controller and the PWM. We are going to do a small experiment and you will be able to see exactly what's going on and what's the benefit of using MPPT. I hit the input limit on my Gold Zero Yeti 400, so I was either buy a much more expensive bigger unit or use external controller and of course I go with the better solution which is external controller and I'm going to hook it up and the money that I would need to spend on the Gold Zero I will better invest just for a battery additional. First we need to understand how we actually charging a chemical batteries and I believe that's going to be true for all of them. We are recharging them with current and voltage is absolutely not in the equation. The only thing that voltage need to do is allow the current flow to start the chemical reaction and that's absolutely only thing. The voltage doesn't matter. So let's make a small example. If I would have a SLA battery on my desk that have a 10 amp hour and I'm going to grab my lab power supply and set it to a 15 volt, attach the alligator clips, set the current limit to one amp. After 10 hour, I'm going to pump into that battery 10 amp hour and make it a fully charged. If I'm going to increase the voltage to for example 30 volt but with a 1 amp hour limit and we are repeating the process after 10 hour our battery is going to be also fully charged and we've got absolutely no benefit. It will not make it charge faster, slower, it will be exactly the same we are passing exactly the same current and exactly the same amount of amp hour. In the 90s you've got a lot of absolutely crappy flashlight that you stuck directly into the AC socket and inside was a resistor and the diode and that was basically a recharging battery and if you remove the battery, put your props, you are going to read like a 300 volts DC but after applying the battery it will limit the current by the resistor, it will load it and you are going to read a 1.2 volt just like you would expect of the, of the battery because it's going to be sinking and flowing the current and self-regulating. Other modern example might be chargers with a desulfation process because they are going to be feeding your battery with a high voltage to allow the sulfate to break like a high voltage pulses and it doesn't really matter for the battery what is the primary reason for having a charger controller it is to limit the voltage so we do not overcharge our battery and we do not cook it that's the main reason why we would like to regulate the voltage and make it in a safe floating level or for cycling it can be higher. If we make assumption that our battery is fully discharged and we supply a 30 volt at 1 amp at the input, we are going to be rounding that into the battery terminals and we are going to get 1 amp of output. So all amps that go in here will go out to the battery. So that's the PWM driver. The voltage is going to be rising, rising, rising. And when the device is starting to seeing that, it will be starting chopping that with a PWM. And at some point in time, it will completely turn itself off. Why the system is inefficient, if we supply a 30 volt, one amp, this is a 30 watt of power and we are recharging 12 volt battery. Let's make assumption that we require a 15 volt. 
but with this system we are going to be outputting a uh, one amp then we are losing somewhere a uh, 15 watt of power and this is inefficient so how to combat that problem as we know the battery only require a current we can grab a dc to dc converter we can feed it with a 30 volt at 1 amp and at the output we can set the 15 volt but we are going to get 2 amp of course i'm making assumption that we do not have any losses but that's the general idea and this is where the mppt controller shine because we can grab any voltage and step it down to the sweet spot for recharging battery and having that chemical reaction but any gain is going to be reflected by additional amp charging current so if we put a 30 volt 1 amp we get like a 15 volt at 2 amp and this is our gain and that model is capable of working with a 100 volt so we can chain multiple panels together we can have a smaller cross section of wires but at the output we can get like a 20 amp there was a saying that seeing is believing so let me do a small scientific experiment i've got my goal zero yeti 400 on the side port we've got the anderson power port charging connectors and they go through a 50 amp fuse directly into the battery so they make great option not only for chining but for recharging our battery straight from a controller i've got my goal zero connected to the pwm controller by those two wire lot of cable and it end up with the anderson power pole the controller is working we've got the battery voltage and now i'm going to grab another wire and we are going to connect it into the power supply let me set a 30 volt because that's going to give us a good mat we've got a exactly 30 volt i'm going to short my leads and we are going to adjust the current to get exactly a one amp because that's what going to give us a good mat so we've got one amp 30 volts 30 watt of power now i'm going to connect it into the solar input and let's observe what's going on we've got a charging process going on as you can see on the voltmeter on the power supply we are reading a battery voltage which is 12.5 volt and that's because the solar charge controller is basically shorting out the input to the output we do not see the pwm action and we are pulling a uh, one amp from the power supply if i'm going to grab my clamp meter to the dc the power going into the go zero is around one amp and the current from the power supply is exactly the same so we've got a conversion one to one so currently we are losing a 15 watt of power that can be used for recharging our battery let me put a mptt and let's see the difference mptt controller is connected to the battery it is currently working let's take a look at the power supply so you see that nothing changed we've got a 30 volt and at the short circuit we've got a one amp absolutely nothing changed into that setup and i'm going to connect into the solar input our 30 volt at one amp and let's take a look at the power supply what's going on the mptt is tracking the maximum power point and it's self-regulating itself 
to get maximum power transfer and we've got a uh, one amp but let's take a look at the voltage we do not dragging it into the battery terminals it's nicely regulating checking the maximum power that we can pull without dragging the voltage down and we are pulling a 30 watts let's see how does it look on the clamp meter when i'm going to measure the input we are going to get exactly one amp but at the output something magic is going to happen and we've got a bonus of additional one amp and that's because the device is stepping down the voltage to go into the happy place of the battery and we can recharge it with the more current that we are pulling so we've got a two amp of charging current inputting just one absolutely do not think that this device is going to give you a 50 percent boost because i just grabbed those value to give you a good and easy to understand math but this controller is more like a step down converter on the mptt you will always see a increase of your energy going into the battery and that's because even if you grab a single solar panel that is rated 12 volt it is actually not a 12 volt more like a 20 volt open circuit and any difference between that around a 14.4 volt for a SLA battery and the 17 volt of the maximum power point is going to be your absolutely free gain that you can, are going to get for a, for a whole year so every time when this is running you are going to get that couple percent for free so in my opinion it is always best to go into the mptt so let me just lower down the voltage let's go to something more realistic like a 17 volt let me go into something like that we've got a 17 volt at 1 amp and as you can see we are still pulling more than we are inputting and this is your realistic absolutely free gain of using a MPTT that's going to be a real use case not a 50% gain but a small smaller one but a constant one and of course that's going to work absolutely beautiful on the multiple solar panels chained together to give you a maximum possible charge current into the output after stepping down the voltage but as you can see it's working absolutely beautiful so thank you very much for watching i hope you find that interesting see you next time and bye-bye.